I do not fear the media. I do not fear journalists. I do not fear APAC. I don't fear big pharma. What I actually fear is God. We begin. Candice Owens. <laughs> Candice Owens. Candice Owens has been fired from a Daily Wire. And news broke today on Twitter. I'm like, okay, is this how things are done now? We are firing people on Twitter? Like, what's happening? What's going on? Okay, so I'll share with you how all this went down. And then uh, we're going to talk about it, okay? So this was... Um, uh, Jamie Boring, okay? Jamie Boring is in charge of uh, Daily Wire, okay? So this is, this uh, Jamie Boring is the co-founder of Daily Wire, him and Ben Shapiro. So this is what he put out. Daily Wire and Candice Owens have ended their relationship. And I'm just like, oh, okay, so you can imagine, okay? And let's uh, scroll over and then somebody asks, Five months ago, you said you didn't want to regulate her speech and she wouldn't be fired unless she broke the law or violated the terms of her contract. What changed? And, uh, oh, <laughs> and this guy put the receipt. <laughs> okay, so the backstory for the receipt over here. Candice Owens uh, got into it with Ben Shapiro. So everybody was expecting like, oh, uh, Ben Shapiro had challenged, had challenged Candice Owens that she can quit. I did a video, so you can just check in one of my videos. I, I already did that video. So this is what Jeremy Boring put out on Twitter. I'm currently on li uh, leave of absence from my executive duties at Dairy Wire. While overseas producing... I guess he put out a video. Um, uh, in my current capacity, I cannot fire Candice Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common. Since he or is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people. But even if we could, we would not fire Candice because of another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our host even when we disagree with them. Candice is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's, unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of a contract in some way her job is secure and she is welcome at Daily Wire. <laughs> then Jenna Ellis, okay? Jenna Ellis uh, represented um, Donald Trump, uh, uh, Pastor MacArthur. Daily Wire is better off for it. <laughs> That's what she put out there. And I just put mine here about time. <laughs> So that's what uh, transpired, okay, as far um, in the Daily Wire world, okay, when Candice Owens was, uh, you know, Candice Owens uh, responded to this, okay. This is what Candice Owens also uh, weighed in. So let's see what Candice uh, had to say, okay, and I'll get to your comments shortly, you guys, because I know you also have something about it, okay. So this is what Candice put out. The rumors are true. I'm finally free. If you would like to support my work, you can uh, you can head to CandiceOwens.com where you'll be directed to my locals page. Or you can give a gift at a GoCandice.com. There will be many announcements in the weeks to come. So this is Candice over here. So she's gone to start her own thing. So uh, this has been uh, a big story on Twitter, as you can imagine. Uh, Candice Owens, her contract was supposed to be up next year. So if she's been let go, uh, you know, I just said they've decided to end their relationship, right? Because if Candice Owens quit, which means she'll be in violation of her contract, and even Daily Wire can let her go, they'll just pay her, you know, whatever year is remaining. So, so far, she hasn't disclosed as to... Uh, you know, as to what happened, right? But she did say that there will be so many things that she's going to talk about in the coming months. So we're going to be here and we're going to wait and see. If you ask me, am I surprised? No, I'm not, I'm not surprised. It was just a matter of time. It was just a matter of time. So uh, I, I, for, for some reason, even when Candice put out um, her, her defense during that time when 
her and Ben got into it. Oh, this because of the Israel, the stuff that's going on in Israel, right? Candice had said like, oh, you know, when I go to the office, Ben is not in the office. Ben is in Florida and everything. But I'm like, yes, Ben is not in the office, but he owns the company. So even if he's not in the office, they're just certain things, girl, you cannot do at the end of the day. <laughs> he owns the company. So... Before I go to uh, what Candice, so Candice has spoken. She put out a video I'm about to share with you guys. But what are you guys saying? Okay. <laughs> hey, oh, my goodness. All right. So, fine. Let's, um, what do you guys think? Do you think, you know, like, you know, which team are you? Are you team Ben? Are you team Candice? Or it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. So, who, uh, um, now she's on Locals. So, uh, I don't know who owns Locals. So, I guess that's where she'll be. Uh, that's where she'll be doing her stuff over there. But Candice, she does have her own uh, YouTube page that she wasn't using. I guess she's just going to go back there. It has, you know, a f uh, over a million followers. So, because she was under contract with uh, Daily Wire, so the YouTube page belongs to Daily Wire, I think, for five years after that. You can give it to her. One thing that I give it to her that she was clever, she negotiated in her contract to keep her Twitter account. But her Instagram page, you know, she did have a Daily Wire Instagram page. So that's going to stay with the Daily Wire. But she did say no to her Twitter account. So that was good. Because there she can, you know, um, work on to rebuild her, you know, her followers, her contact, her contacts, things of that nature. I do think that this is what led to her firing, okay? There have been so many things, but Candace Owen had this gentleman on her program. And I suspect it's because of this and many other things, okay? So I'm just going to share a clip with you guys, and then um, we're going dive, to uh, dive into it, okay? So this is... Um, uh, this is Candace Owens on her page. So I'm suspecting that this might have been some of the reasons. Okay, so this is uh, R Rabbi Buckley. He's, he's, you know, controversial, but let's listen to what they were talking about. Here we go. If I could go backwards in the context of trying to understand why Americans think that nationalism is a bad word, it was appropriate for me to bring off Adolf Hitler it is totally appropriate in any capacity when you are talking about history and historical sentiments to bring up any relevant character that has created those sentiments. So I just want to, again, I just want to yes or no. After watching that, in we, I, I want to make sure we don't run out of time here. After watching that in context, do you think it is fair that you wrote, she publicly said that Hitler was okay? Hitler was okay. Yeah. Yes, by bringing me even into the conversation, yes, I do. Okay, great. Let's move on here, because um, I, again, this discussion, we're having it between us, but I, I want the public to be able to, you know, to do what's fair and what's not fair. You then wrote this statement. A mere month after the horrors of babies being beheaded, women being raped, and the slews of horrors from Hamas, Owens went on Tucker Carlson's show to speak about how it really wasn't that bad, and why should she even care? After all, she seems to think that Hitler was okay, so what's the problem? Is that true that I went on Tucker Carlson's show and said that October 7th really wasn't that bad? Um, yeah, actually, it did. And it did it through the implications and the words. And, and I actually do know where some of those clips are because I've rewatched it multiple times. Mm -hmm. And you specifically say you want to have an academic discussion. You specifically say, um, I don't want to misquote you, that you, have a, you, have a, you believe you have a moderate stance okay. because you see the children dying and on both sides. And you talk about um, the pain. And I, and I think you do feel pain about Gaza. Um, and this goes back to the anti-Semitism campus. What happened October 7th is unique. It is, to, to even make a moral equivalency, this is one of the keys in anti-Semitism and in any prejudice and bigotry, is that an inappropriate moral equivalency is created. When someone says that this race, these people, whomever, are like dogs, they've made a moral equivalency between those people and dogs, that is bigotry. That okay. is hatred. Would you so agree I, just, with that? I, I first want to debunk the idea. Okay, so uh, Candice had this gentleman on her program, and where it is they feel that, you know, Candice Owens, she has made some uh, anti Semitic comments, which Candice has denied, okay? But be that as it may, this was a discussion that they were having. Now, uh, the next day, Candice uh, decided to set the record straight herself, okay? 
And this is what Candice Owens ended up saying, okay, when she uh, she had her program. So this is, you know, there's just so much stuff that has been going on, you okay? So let's uh, see to what Candice Owens uh, shared, okay, after the fact with that gentleman. Okay, here we go. It's been happening for years. And really all I've ever done since I've had a platform is just try to show you guys the truth. I don't want to tell you what to think. I can only share with you what my experiences are and hope that it helps you develop your own ideas. So let's recap, because I'm going to share some things I never shared before. Obviously, you guys know that I hit the scene in 2017, and I had a laser sharp focus on the black community. My career began when I started making YouTube videos, really challenging the BLM narrative. I was having my own awakening in real time about the lies that the media was printing about black people, really lies that were meant in my, my viewpoint to keep black people down, to encourage black people uh, to live a life of criminality, to encourage black people to loot and to riot their own neighborhoods in the name of some perceived social justice. I pretty immediately got hired at Turning Point USA and I hit the ground running with Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk is unapologetically pro-Israel. Everybody knows this. I was beside him uh, throughout most of his pro-Israel commentary and I bet if people dug it up on the internet, you would hear me saying pro-Israel talking points. And I say talking points because when I got into it, I didn't really care again about Israel because I was an American and I just want to talk about black America, but certainly I was nodding my head no matter what Charlie Kirk said. So that's, uh... So that was Candice the next day after he had a conversation with that rabbi, okay? So this um, Candice went on, you know, she was just laying it out there just to clarify, like, okay, you know, I, uh, there's so many things that have been going on. I've been lied to, so I'm here to set the record straight, okay? So this is, uh, she also made this comment, okay? So let's... Uh, uh, Let's listen in, okay? We're not going to go through everything, but I just want you guys to get uh, the highlights of what she shared, okay? So here we go. So my offer stands. Anybody who wants to write an article or smear your libel me, you are invited to this show. Hopefully, they'll take up my offer. Hopefully, in a few weeks, I will be out to Israel and I will be out to Gaza and I will be able to report to you guys what it is that I actually see. But I also want to say this because it's so important. I am team God, okay? I'm team God. I do not fear the media. I do not fear journalists. I do not fear APAC. I don't fear Big Pharma. What I actually fear is God. I think that one day we are all going to have to account for the things that we have done and the things that we have said. And I want to make sure that I am not a person that is parroting lies. The fear of losing your job, encouraging some people to spit out lies, I don't think that works in the end. Right? I think you've you got to check your priorities. And so with that said, I want to thank everybody who has been on this journey with me, people that have supported me. I especially want to thank all of the Jewish people that have been in the comments saying how outraged they are. And I know that it is especially difficult for you guys right now because you are being smeared, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go away. I'm going to use my God-given voice to talk about the things that are important for me. And I'm just asking to be left alone or at least just report the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. But don't worry because we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode. So that was uh, Candice Owens, where she said, you know, don't worry, you guys, I'll be able to see you guys tomorrow. And that tomorrow never came. That's when she ended up, uh, that's how she got fired. So that program came out on Thursday, and then Friday morning, Candice was gone. So I think, I think she knew that she might not survive this. But she was just like, I'm not going anywhere. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Knowing Candice, if she knew that was her last day, she would have closed the program saying, you know, this is my last program. Being here at the Daily Wire. You know what I'm saying? S saying bye to her, to her audience. But that's not what happened. Okay? So, hold on. She did say something else on this clip that I want to share with you. Here we go. Severe financial consequence behind the scenes because of those words that you heard right there. And one day I will talk more about that. You have my word. Let's fast forward instead to 2023. I'm scrolling through Twitter and a journalist, and again, this is just a few weeks after October 7th, and a journalist named Yashar Ali is, I think, being pretty measured in his responses. I think he's pro-Israel uh, based on how he tweets and what he tweets about. But on this day, he was focused on something that Brian Mast, a congressman, had said on the floor. Shar Ali tweeted, this is absolutely sick stuff from Rep. Brian Mast. And if there's any decency left in Congress, a resolution will be passed to condemn his remarks and he'll be removed from the Foreign Affairs Committee. I'm not naive enough to think he'd resign. So I saw this tweet and then I clicked to see what Brian Mast said and I was equally as disgusted. Here's what Brian Mast said. As a whole, 
I would encourage the other side to not so lightly throw around the idea of innocent Palestinian civilians, as is frequently said. Uh, I don't think we would so lightly throw around the term innocent Nazi civilians during World War II. I hope that enrages you because what he's basically saying is there's no such thing as an innocent Palestinian life. And basically, I believe, was laying the groundwork for genocide. That is a ge- that's genocidal language to say about any group of people. If I say there's, there's no such thing as an innocent Iraqi, it doesn't matter who you're talking about, that is genocidal language. And so I retweeted this and I said, yeah, this was disgusting, utterly dehumanizing. Of course, there are innocent civilians on either side of every conflict, and we should not forget that. This is shameful, inhumane rhetoric. I shortly followed up that retweet with a blanket statement No government anywhere has a right to commit a genocide ever. There was no justification for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. Of course, what Brian Mass said was wrong. When I tweeted that second tweet, people thought that I was talking about Israel, or some people thought I was talking about Israel. They were so far in the trenches, they thought that I was making a statement that Israel is committing a genocide, when in reality I was saying that people like Brian Mass need to cool it with their language. I get something bad has happened, but you can't say stuff like this ever. And so what happened... So... So all that, you put it all together, it, it, those are the things that have led to uh, Candace Owens no more at the Daily Wire. I think, you know, she has uh, bailed her own thing, so she will definitely be fine. And then there was another organization, okay? I mean, like, <laughs> they are coming from all, from left and right, okay? There's this, this organization, okay? Um... It's called ADL, and this is what they put out. White supremacist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes is praising Candace Owens' vitriolic anti-Semitism. It's hardly surprising, but it does not set off alarm bells when bigoted people come together to push anti-Semitic agenda. It adds fuel to the fire. But, uh, you know, you know, the, this was a community. It was checked by uh, by X. Always never says anything at Semitic. Rather, she explains the Christian perspective of the behavior of specific individuals. Whether this made Nick Fuentes happy or not, it is irrelevant to her claims. Do you find this helpful? So the community tab did check uh, on that fact. And so... Um, Candice Owens, all these things, they have, they did transpire ever since the Gaza situation, okay? What is my thing that I have assessed? I don't, Candice Owens is not, the conflict between what's happening in Palestine and between Israel is, you, you cannot just rely on talking points. So Candace Owens doesn't know what's going on in that region, okay? The history of it and all this particular conflict. So as a result, she has found herself saying things that were just uh, not true or things that are just like, uh, you know, these, these are myths. These are just not true. So I think she should have just left that thing alone. But, you know, she comments on all various things like, fine, if you want to comment, your comment is something that you're not familiar with. It will lend you in this situation. So I think that open door for her to have herself in this particular trouble. Then if, um, fast forward, remember when Kanye West made the comments that he made? Candice Owens came out. She says, like, I'm not an expert on, on this Jewish thing, so that's why I've chosen to remain silent. So she decided not to say anything about it. Uh, her and Kanye are friends. All right, fine, you're not going to say anything. You are not an expert of the stuff that's going on in Gaza. Cool. Now, when the October 7th happened, all of a sudden, Candice has become an expert. She's making a comment. She says, oh, I make comments on everything, so that's why I was making a comment on this issue. You see what I'm saying? So then uh, people are looking at, okay, when the Kanye West came about, you said you are not an expert. Now the Gaza issue has come out. Now you're commenting. Where are you on that issue? You see what I'm saying? And then it did not even help matters, given that uh, her boss, okay, uh, Ben Shapiro, he's Jewish, and he knows more about this topic. As a result, it looks like, okay, so Ben, are you saying this as a fact or you're saying these things because you're Jewish? You see what I'm saying? But he does know what he's talking about as far as the Jewish, uh, the history thing is concerned. And, you know, with Candace, you know, things played outside, you're having issues with your boss. Like, yes, it's a free speech, but you have to understand, like, he owns the company. Okay, like, he, you're not going to come on my channel and be talking about me. <laughs> And then you're saying free speech. That's not going to fly. It's not going to fly anywhere else. So to me, I think there's things. uh, She was in a situation where, but like, okay, if you want to talk about this subject, 
it's not going to help you the situation given the platform that you're in it's not like the people at daily wire don't want to talk about these things okay you see the other guys they don't talk about these issues you think they don't want to talk about it they just know like you know what i'm just gonna stay in my lane <laughs> take it or leave it welcome guys in the chats okay i'll get to your chat short right? but let's listen in to what uh the issue that candace owen has put out okay so she has spoken so this is what she has said so let's uh hear what candace had to say hey guys it's candace the rumors are true i am free welcome to my locals page so much to talk about obviously i'm going to take a couple of weeks here just to rebuild and to refocus and to create something that is actually mine and something that can't be threatened or taken because it belongs to me i can't tell you enough how much your support has meant to me over the years we're just getting started join the locals page obviously here you can support me and my work as an independent journalist as an independent podcaster um we're still going to be doing five days a week there'll be tons of announcements coming in the next couple of weeks and i guess the last thing i want to say is thank you and for those of you that don't want to be on locals and just want to support in any capacity you can head to gocandice.com thank you guys all right so that is candice uh asking people to go to her locals page because that's where she'll be and uh you know just asking people to support her there so i guess that's where people are you know they should be able to go over there and support everything else that she's doing so she put out this is candace over here if you click it you have to you know i guess it's membership only you have to be a member to participate okay so right there uh enter amount to give is 77 dollars uh per year okay that's what she's she's doing over there hey man you know she can do her own thing over there if people want to participate they can they can participate okay she's uh clearly not forcing anybody but people can do whatever they wish so to me uh yeah she's gonna learn man like okay no no gram team okay <laughs> you gotta edit them videos you gotta pay for <laughs> for the all drop the whole nine yards but she'll be fine to be quite honest she has the following uh you know like he you know she's good you know what i mean her husband is an aristocrat uh you know comes from aristocrat family so she'll be fine she'll be fine but that's what has happened okay <laughs>